All right, what's up everybody? Back here, do a little update on the Waka Tatia that I have here. And just first off, I wanna show you a little bit more about the outfitting that I kinda of figure out after I mess with it for a bit. So these thigh hooks here, they do actually move left and right. So you just uh, loosen this bolt here and you can push them in or pull them back out. So I pulled them back out a little bit more. I'll just show you here how I fit in here now. So again, these kind of cup your thighs. Now it's still very flexible as you can see, not rigid at all, but it does help keep your feet in here a little better. It's definitely not as good as like the, the goat still, but it does make it better now that I figured this out. Yeah, so check out my review when I went over the actual boat. It's a little update on after I paddled it. I got it on the lower big sandy and it paddles pretty well, especially for, I don't know how old the design is, maybe like five years or so. Design, old design, it paddles pretty well. It's, I'll give you the pros and cons, kind of what, what I think here. So pros, it is a dry boat, despite the, the amount of holes. I obviously have my dry gear on in the, in the winter, but I'll paddle other boats and still have a lot of water in the boat. Didn't have any water in the boat, so that's a good thing. I'll say that about it. It's very quick and agile on its feet. It's small, it's only like 8'2", so you can shift around and change course and direction really easy. So that's another, that's another plus. It's pretty fast. Once you get it going up to speed, it can stay online. It's got that nice planning hole for that. And the other thing I'll say about it is it does pop out of holes pretty well. It doesn't have the bow rocker like the modern boats have, but it still, it kind of like plugs and pops out rather than like ride up and over. The cons kind of I'll say, the planning hole is a pro in kind. It gets stuck on rocks pretty easy as far as, you know, if you just run over a rock, it doesn't want to bounce off one side or the other. Obviously that's a planning hole, but so you get some pro and con there. It doesn't boo very well because of that reason. I think I'm still a little bit heavy for it. I would say the prime weight here is probably like 120 to 130 and then below obviously. I'm about 140-ish now, somewhere around that. So I did sink in the water a little bit, but still paddled overall pretty well. Con, another con I would say is again, the I'm not a huge fan of these straps. I said in the last video, I don't know how much pressure they can hold. The straps themselves are probably pretty good, but still this, they might pull out of here. I honestly say though, the straps are probably a little stronger than this as far as being able to rip through the actual bolt there. But that's one thing I don't like again, I already said in the last video, and then the kind of flexible cockpit rim here, I'm not a huge fan of. If they fix those two things on the boat, I could actually say it's a pretty good boat. The other kind of con it has is a lack of bow rocker. Again, it can't compete with the modern designs like the Code and Scorch. They just go over everything. Again, that's what kind of does that old school like plug and up. It'll still get you through holes, but it's not as easy as the Code or, or Scorch may be. I would say it's an in-between paddling boat as far as the Scorching Code, as far as like having to drive it and being kind of lazy and kind of picking your course down river. It's definitely, you know, you want to go fast in this boat. It's more of an aggressive paddling style boat, but it's not like the 9R or something like that where you have to and it, then it totally destroys you. It's pretty good. It's a pretty forgiving boat. As far as what I recommend it for, you know, you could take it on class 5 if you wanted to. I would be careful on creaky stuff just because I don't know. I don't know about how strong these things are if you got pinned and the flexible cockpit kind of... Uh, it's a little unsafe in my opinion, but that's just my opinion. But yeah, I mean, it could handle that, that amount of water. It'd be more for, I would say this boat's better for, again, like the Pacific Northwest kind of big water style rather than like a, a creek, like the green or something like that, just due to the planing hole. And again, the kind of lack of the, the bow rocker there. I was doing this review five years ago before all the other boats come out. I would say this boat's pretty awesome for for, you know, how old it is or whatnot. I really do like it. It's a good paddling boat. Some of the features, again, I would say are a little unsafe. So that, that kind of hinders me to say, yeah, go ahead and get you one. If you can find one on the used market pretty at a decent price, might not be a bad boat for you if you're starting out. If you're doing, you know, nothing more than like class three, class four, something like that, would be a great boat to have. I would not buy this new just because compared to the Code or Scorch, 
all the other creek boats, the five, it's just not as good. Um, and that's not the fault of the boat, it's just an older design. So don't pay $1,600 for it like I did. But yeah, if you can find one used, you're interested in it, sure, not a bad boat at all. But anyway, yeah, check out my other video on it. Questions, comments, let me know. Please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching my channel, and I'll see y'all later.